Full frame cameras have made it easy for us to blast away with sharp images and all of the bokeh, aka background blur, that you can ask for. In the right situations, that's great, mission accomplished. But in more creative scenarios, especially with street photography sometimes, there's more we can do to make an image interesting and give the viewer more context. Today we're going to break down one of my favorite techniques for photo and sometimes video, adding depth with foreground elements. It might also be referred to as adding layers or just composition, and there are several ways to do it. Real quick though, before we jump in, a word of advice. Whenever I'm watching YouTube videos, especially on my TV, I always forget to click the like button when I should as the video is going along. And then at the end of the video, I've got to go back into the video. Maybe that means watching another ad and then press that like button to show love. So as a way to save you some time, if you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button as we go along. Doesn't have to be right now, but you know, maybe in like three or four minutes when you're like, oh, this video is helping. Consider hitting the like button and helping the channel grow. Maybe subscribe too. It is much appreciated. Okay, so first of all, what is a foreground element? Shoot, what's the foreground? That's simply the front of your image. Think the opposite of the background. So a foreground element is something that appears there. In this image, it would be the sunflowers ahead of the direction that my wife and sister are walking in. What these elements do for your image is provide depth when positioned in front of your subject. When shooting with a full frame sensor, it's pretty easy to make your subject pop by shooting with a shallow depth of field. But with APS-C cameras like Fujifilm's X100 series or Micro Four Thirds cameras or phone cameras, which have even smaller sensors, it's a bit more difficult to get that subject separation from the background. So again, this is where adding to the foreground can make your photo stand out. The first way to do it is the easiest. Once you have your subject lined up, find something near you and use it toward the edge of your frame. It could be a tree, a street lamp or post, a plant, just about almost anything. It adds a little something extra that makes the shot feel more point of view and maybe even places the viewer there in their head. It can be hit or miss though. Depending on the foreground element and object, it could just look like a dark blob obstructing the shot or more of a mistake than intentional. In this case, I suggest you stop down your aperture so the object is less blurry and more defined so the viewer might be able to actually tell what it is. This one is, I'll admit, a bit of a lazy shot taken with the Sigma 24 to 70 wide open at f2.8. I think that you can tell it's a wooden post on the left side of the image, but if I'd stop down a bit more, the post would be more defined and give the viewer a little more context. So it just takes being a little bit more intentional this way. The next way to add depth, especially if your subject is lower to the ground or sitting down or a pet, is to bring your camera down to that level and allow the ground or whatever's in front of them to draw the viewer's eye into the subject. Sometimes it's cut and dry like leading lines from sidewalks or stairs shadows or structures that appear to form a clear path. But even when that's not available, anything that can look interesting enough when it's out of focus should work. This is also a fine time to note that all of this works to train your eye, which is something that does come over time. I don't think any of us pick up a camera and just know what we're looking for every time we go shoot. I think we're all constantly trying to get better and find our style, so practice, as always, makes close to perfect, if not perfect. Moving on, the next thing to look for is what I call a frame or window for your subject. And this is as much about composition as it is adding depth. Finding a frame within your frame is another great way to add a cool layer to your image and subject. Bike racks are a great example, especially this one where I have the rack creating a frame around the bike and the part of the rack that's on the ground acts as a leading line into the bike. My only regret with this shot is that I didn't have a 50 millimeter lens to blur out that background a little bit more. My 35 millimeter, even wide open at f1.4, didn't quite do the trick. Without the foreground element, I don't know that I'd like this image at all. More common than a freaking bike rack of all things would be plants. 
Gardens, hiking, streets, coffee shops, bars, plants are just everywhere and they make for some excellent foreground elements because of their variety and different shapes. Again, though, this is an instance where if you're too close to that foreground element or your aperture is too bright, you risk just making it look like a green blob within the photo. I've actually gotten some of my favorite shots this way and sometimes it helps to be more lucky than good. I just happened to be in the right spot at the right time for a candid photo while hiking with my father-in-law for this one. Other times it just takes keeping an eye out for what could add visual interest and taking a few extra seconds to line up and compose the shot to use the foreground element well. All right, stick with me. A few more examples before I get to my favorite, but this next one will especially help with my foodie friends. It's annoying, it's sometimes cringe, maybe a little bit vain, but if you're taking food pics, how you're arranging that food does matter. So in this series of photos, the first on the left has the sandwich in focus with the side and the beer thrown out of focus behind. The next one has the pasta, the side in focus with the sandwich acting as more of a foreground element. And the last one has the beer in focus with everything on the plate acting as a foreground element that is out of focus. There are subtle differences, and I don't know how well you could recreate this subject separation with a small sensor on a phone. I took these with my X106, but it can help turn an average food on the table shot into something just a little more interesting. But my favorite foreground element far and away is people, probably because it's the most rewarding when you time your shot well. When I used to live in New Orleans, Mardi Gras and parades were always a great time to get these shots. When you're traveling in crowded tourist areas, it's an effective way to use those crowds. Wow, did my voice just crack? Use those crowds as an advantage to still make a good photo. It's also worth noting that it works best with medium and telephoto lenses. Think 50 millimeters and beyond. A lot of these were taken with Tamron's 35 to 150 f2 to 2.8 and I would definitely suggest taking a look at my review of that lens if you haven't after this video. Some of them were taken with Sony 70 to 200 f4 Mark II, which I recently reviewed as well and really, really enjoyed. Anyway, using people to frame up your shots is a lot of fun and makes for natural, more candid looking photos as well. Especially at events, it gives the viewer a true sense of being there and within the action. And it's been a technique that I've created some of my favorite photos with year in and year out. That's all I've got for today, but there are also ways to edit for depth, though I think that deserves its own video. Plus, we've been here long enough. I've been recording this video long enough. If you did find this video helpful, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show some love and let me know if you like this kind of content and I'll have more of it in the future. I'll see you in the next video.